So guys, two different conditions at the knee, patella femoral pain and a patella tendinopathy. Incredibly similar characteristics, but ultimately very different. So how do we tell the difference between the two? Let's find out. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So ultimately, why do we need to know the difference between these two conditions? And really it comes down to management because we do treat them differently in practice. So I'm gonna take you through what the difference is in terms of assessment of these conditions, and then we're gonna talk about how management differs too. So let's start with patellofemoral pain. So first of all, patellofemoral pain. As you can imagine, this condition is characterized by pain around the patellofemoral joint, the joint between the patella, or the kneecap, and the thigh bone. And generally speaking, we classify patellofemoral pain as a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning that we need to rule out other knee pathologies, such as a patella tendinopathy, an ACL injury, a meniscal injury or osteoarthritis before we can truly rule in patellofemoral pain. So as we said a second ago, the main characteristic is that these individuals will have pain around the patellofemoral joint itself. Sometimes it's very direct over the joint, sometimes it can be slightly to the lateral side, and sometimes it can be slightly to the medial side as well. But ultimately, it's around the joint. You might find that sometimes people describe a bit of a C-shape around the medial side of the joint, but ultimately we are looking in that location. We find that these patients are unlikely to experience a key swelling. Most of the time, there will be an insidious onset where the patient almost feels like they don't know why their pain started. However, sometimes, of course, it can be due to the fact that they've had a trauma such as falling directly onto their knee. Otherwise, we do find that there are common aggravating factors that patients will describe, such as pain going up and down stairs, pain with squatting, pain with kneeling, or pain when sitting with their knee flexed to 90 degrees for a long period of time. We sometimes call this cinema sign, as it's like sitting with your knees bent for a long period of time. So certainly look out for these when you're doing your history. So moving on to a patella tendinopathy, how does this differ clinically? Well, ultimately, the first thing to talk about is the location of your patient's pain, because Rather than with patellofemoral pain, where they kind of describe a global kind of roundabout area, with a patella tendinopathy, they will be much more likely to point directly at the patella tendon itself, particularly towards the distal or bottom end of the tendon. And sometimes it might even be that they use one or maybe two fingers to quite precisely point to where their pain is. So that might be the first giveaway. Secondly, we look for a history of overload that commonly involves things like jumping or running. It's no surprise that jumper's knee is a way that we sometimes describe patellofemoral pain because of an overload in this activity. So you might be thinking about your basketball players, your netball players, your volleyball players, all individuals who are doing that jumping in an overload manner over a period of time. So with patellofemoral pain, we talked about some of those common aggravating factors, such as sitting with their knees flexed for a long period of time, the squatting, the kneeling, the going up and down the stairs. Now, with a patella tendinopathy, we tend to find that the aggravating factors are more specifically linked to loading and overload of that tendon. So you might be thinking of the jumping the running, the volleyball, the basketball, the specific activity that seemed to set her off in the first place. And normally your patients can be quite clear that their symptoms come on during their activity, during the basketball, or perhaps just after the basketball, and that their symptoms linger for a period of time specifically after that activity. Whereas with patellofemoral pain, we sometimes find that it's there most of the day most of the week. And whilst it could be aggravated by those factors that we talked about, it dissipates for a much longer period. It hangs around compared to with a patella tendinopathy, which is more specifically linked to the activity. So here's a question. Do these conditions occur at the same time? Well, actually, we've got a fantastic paper from Malieres et al. featuring Jill Cook and Ebony Rio, link in the description below, which highlights that actually these conditions don't commonly coexist in practice. And therefore, we should be able to try and think about whether our patient has one or the other. 
So having gone through the assessment, what about management? How do we treat these conditions differently? Well, if we start with patellofemoral pain, and first of all, we point to brilliant work from Dr. Bradley Neal and Dr. Simon Lack, two experts in patellofemoral pain. And we're really lucky that they've done a brilliant course with us on patellofemoral pain. Link for this is in the description below. Now, when we look at their thoughts on management, we commonly talk about different adjuncts, such as potentially taping, such as foot orthoses, and when we talk about education, this is paramount for these individuals. It's really important that they understand that we don't want to aggravate their symptoms through loading. And actually, one of the most important things is to make sure that their activity doesn't flare up their symptoms. So what about exercises for patellofemoral pain? Well, really interestingly, We've seen in practice and from research that a generalized approach to these individuals is okay. Here's a brilliant study from Hot et al, link again in the description below, which shows that when they gave patients either hip exercises or knee-based exercises, both outcomes for the groups were the same, and therefore there wasn't a specifically significant differences between the effect of those two exercises. What we do know is that education around the use of the exercises and using them to not flare up pain is crucially important. So do think about this with your patients. So next, management of patella tendinopathy. This is slightly different in that a generalized approach doesn't seem to fit these patients. In fact, it's much more specific where loading of the patella tendon itself is crucial in order to get the outcomes that you want for your patient. So therefore, we're definitely going to be thinking about the quadriceps and specifically loading that patella tendon. Some exercises that we might commonly think about might include leg extension, an absolutely brilliant exercise which has been criticized for patella tendinopathy in the past, but is a real favorite with me. We might think about things like the leg press as a potentially easier way of moving into leg extensions and also squats. We can almost do these on a decline as well to try and offload that patella tendon a little bit. Now, we also have this brilliant study from Breda et al, link in the description below if you want it, looking at the impact of a progressive tendon loading program, showing that patients do have better outcomes compared to those who don't. So, for example, we have a better return to sport percentage. Patients will also have a lower pain experience and higher satisfaction scores, showing that loading that patella tendon is crucially important. So do we use isotonic exercises, eccentric exercises, concentric exercises? Well, I often look towards a heavy, slow resistance program highlighted by Malieres et al. Once again, link in the description below, whereby we gradually increase the amount of weight going through our eccentric exercises and they're slow, meaning that the tendon really has to work hard during that loading. So guys, for more on patellofemoral pain, we've got this brilliant course from Dr. Bradley Neal and Dr. Simon lack, link in the description below, going through all the key facets of patellofemoral pain, including diagnosis, including rehab, including running exercises, adjuncts, exercises, all the key things you need to know. Otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Remember, you can find much more from us on Instagram at Clinical Physio and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid. Thank you for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.